Welcome back to beautiful Estacada, Oregon for some more Beaver State Fling Round 2 League card coverage. I am Ian Anderson sitting next to your reigning Pro Tour champion, Nathan Queen. It's been fun. Yeah. Um, Milo McIver West is bringing out lots of different ways to score, good and bad out here. We saw Corey Ellis start off with a couple bogeys and then fight back strong with birdies. Chris Nelson here keeping it clean, four down. Albert had the good start and then running into some troubles late in the front nine. And Thomas, hopefully he can get it back on the rails here in this, this back nine. Yeah, he had a few rough holes there to finish. A couple doubles, I believe. Mm -hmm. But Garrett Gerthy, Linus Carlson, not having much of that trouble going on. Tuamas also with a six down through the round. Through nine holes. That's impressive. Uh, looking at hole 10, this is such a tough get, Nathan. Yeah, bonus birdie for sure. 450 feet. With a super low ceiling late, if you can carry it past these branches another 30, 40 feet and catch this where the grass changes to dirt and mulch here, you might have a chance to slide up there. But very difficult to reach this pin unless you throw a roller. Yeah, that Masters round I was telling you about with the champ, he rolled this one and birdied that one too. The, the champ, man. He's, like, he's incredible. Corey Ellis. Yeah, and trying to get the power to reach this one With turned air. it over a bit too much. He's going to have a tough time over there. It is really crowded. There's a huge wall of trees in between the green and where Corey Ellis's disc is. Nelson with a beautiful turnover. Can it hold? Wow. That held so much longer than it looked like it was going to, and he's got a favorable lie punching through those branches. He's going to have a circle two look. Love it. Albert. It's low. Yep. Mm. One of the mistakes, one of the many mistakes you can make <laughs> on this hole for how wide open it is. It really causes you to do some crazy things mm -hmm. trying to get there. It does. That, that, that last like 50, 60 feet into the woods, planning for that will make the, the rest really tough. Gilbert. This looks great. Did he do it? Needs to get a little bit of fade uh. and just not quite enough about six feet to the left and i think that is part mm -hmm. albert pitching into the heart of darkness that's done well yeah gauges that distance well once you're a hundred feet or so short of the mouth going into the woods it can be a, a little difficult to throw it as far as you need to it's hard to see down there and i noticed today also that about 40 feet past that basket down to the left is a lake now. If you go in no there, way. You're, Are you serious? you're not getting it back. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that before. Oh, Chris, that's a missed opportunity for a great bonus bird. Albert to say par, and he's done that nicely. Yeah, you, you can see it down there. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, my gosh. It's wet. <laughs> Milo drains well, but there's only so much it can do. I missed Corey's shot there. Did he? Did he go? He, up he and pitched. Over? He pitched through. Actually, okay. he was like he was far enough in with his long limbs, he could find a window through. Cool. He pitched through nicely, and now we'll say par. Yeah, and that's what the field did. Three point one on the day. Fourteen percent below. Sixteen percent bogey or above. Wow. <laughs> And Chris, almost one of those few birdies. That would have been fantastic. Going to connect on the par, though. He drops in his par as Poncho Pete looks on. Albert saving par on the pole. Well done. And Umbrella's still open. Huh. I think it picked up for just a little bit right around here, but I don't think it lasted too long. On to hole 11. I, I actually see a lot of people just play this for par. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't even want to talk about this one. <laughs> As a lefty? Yeah. I don't blame you, man. I don't like it. Sexton? Well, <laughs> it, it, Sexton just throws a forehand out into the other fairway, pitches in, and takes a par every time. Yeah, no. high righty, mm -hmm. high right hand, backhand hyzer. If you can drift it around and get to 40 feet, it's a pretty good shot. If you can get inside 40 feet, it's really great. Uh, just behind that log you see behind the basket is a raging river at the moment. No, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, It was while we played it, it was moving. If your disc went in there, it probably would have carried away. 
And that's about 10 feet behind the basket. Ellis shooting the gap beautifully. Does this have what it takes? I don't believe it's left enough to park it. It looks like you're right, Nathan. Out there in the fairway. But pin high. Yeah, good shot. Like like I was saying, it's pretty difficult, even with the right-hand backhand, to really park this one. You got this gap off the tee to think about. Yeah, and this one's going out straight. Going to be pushing long. Oh, that's pushing really long. Yeah, that's towards yeah. the next tee area. Um, he's going to have kind of a turnover shot maybe into the green now. Albert. And... Oh, what a second. The Still discount up. double kick helped. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Left is nightmare fuel over there. It's straight jail. So very fortunate to kick out right. Open up the, opens up the angle. Oh, oh Dilbert's going with kind of a flex shot there. That's kind of a, yeah. a, str a strange play. Looks like it could have worked if he, if he did it, but I'm not sure. Albert. W exactly what the idea was. There. Yeah, trying to get up and down. He didn't put enough turn on that. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Good to bounce out of that tree, but yes. still not going to be in a good spot. Oh, wow. Thomas got to a great spot. Does he take advantage and save par? It's so difficult. Mm. So difficult mm. to get into this green if you're not around that corner. Yep. It just keeps pushing so far. Is Albert again? Yes. And he's not even... So he's way short left, and he's kind of cutting the corner with a forehand, which you can do sometimes. I think he's given himself a chance for bogey? Hopefully. Nelson pushed it long right, forced to go forehand approach. Did that hit a tree? It did. Yeah. And that's 50, mm. 50, 60 feet out there. Looking like his first bogey coming up. Can he avoid it? Par look. Yeah, 57 feet. Raging river behind it. That's not OB. <laughs> Oh, no what a putt. Way. Nelson. Wants the clean round. Not going to give it up just yet. Cans the 57-foot par look. Awesome. Ellis for birdie from seven closer. Yeah, 50 feet, which is a good shot. And Ooh. says, no big putt for you, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> I'm going to can my birdie putt. And take that box. There we go, Corey. Man, you look at this, the scores right now after that first two holes. Well, yeah, Corey has turned it around, man. Yeah. Really impressive. Six birdies through um, nine holes now after those first two. How about that? And Gilbert, what a par save. Doing Canada proud right there. Yeah, they are not. It, you see him looking at the water back there right now. <laughs> not scared of it, though. I don't know if... I imagine they know it's there, but it's, Al it's not usually. Uh -oh. Ooh, that's a double for Albert, and this is one of the holes that can get you. And you know that that Sexton forehand play looking uh, looking pretty good right now, isn't it? Yeah, you know, this, yeah, this, absolutely. You can look at the gap with the forehand; it finishes out wide, gives you a great angle into the green. But Corey, Corey wanted a birdie. Corey got a birdie. Corey got a birdie. Only eight percent of the field did that was the second hardest hole on the course at a 3.29. This one, not a ton. It's a ton easier to get the birdie. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, the line is definitely easier. It's, um, it's a pretty good distance, a pretty difficult distance to keep your disc as straight as you need it to go. And then once you do, you have to make sure you get farther than the pin or left of those trees and bushes because mm -hmm. you don't have a putt if you're behind them. Very true. Ellis. So really, you just need 430 feet of straight. Yeah, that's it. Right here. No big deal. There's a little bit of room to flex. You can drift it left or right, but straight's the play. Yeah, Corey left it a little... Two left. Nelson. Can this glide? It gets around the corner. Yeah, gets around the corner, but most likely skips into yeah, the not shul. a great look, yeah. which is where the straight comes in. It's it's difficult to do, though, this get it to land. This overturned. is another mistake that you make trying not to go off to the left side. It's pretty thick in there for Thomas. I wouldn't be surprised to see a bogey. Hopefully he can scramble, though. Albert. Albert has that great fast forward moving 
and his disc like to skip even though the grass is wet. So <laughs> if this can stay clean, it's got a line. Yeah, and that should be pretty good. I think he pit, uh, pushed far enough to not catch a big skip. Should have kind of hit the front uh, or close to the front of that hill. And you called it earlier. Uh, Thomas looking at a bogey now. Yeah. And I left at hole nine, too, to grab cards. So <laughs> no spoiler alert crowd. Ellis. That's good enough for par. Yeah, pretty good bid there from 90. Thomas to save his par. Oh, no way. You didn't. You did not call it. <laughs> I did not call it. I was wrong. <laughs> Thomas, you animal. Oh, man. Chris Nelson getting the big putts going on the last one. Thomas wow. from... On. It had to be close, man. It was Not, way yeah, out there. That was awesome. Nelson is a birdie look. Oh, he's found a window. Yeah, he's... Is that pin height? Yeah, he's yeah, pin he's height left. Pin yeah, Pin height left. Low window, and Albert oh. did push up there. This is what you want. This is comically good. Right on, just right, right by the steps, too. Yeah. It doesn't have to go anywhere. A nice bounce back. Getting him back under par for the round. Wow. He's going to need a couple more, though. He has to get back in this mix as Ellis and Nelson are starting to pull away. A little gap there. There it is. Ellis putting home the par. One more of those there for Nelson. And then we'll be on to the next. Who's slow while we get here? Oh, yeah. Huge putt from Thomas. Yeah, not even clean. He's got to go around or over these trees. Little tickle? Doesn't matter. Yeah, that was in either way. What a putt. What a par save. Incredible. Here are your scores after 12 holes. Now Girthy's still leading by a stick over Ellis, who's charging right now. Yes. yes. Adam Hammes. Got Luke, hum um, Luke Sampson and Joel Freeman popping their oh, name nice. into the top 10 there. Uh, hole 13, in my opinion, one of the easier par fours on the course. Not as short as some of the other ones, but wide open all the way until you get to the green. There's a bit of a low ceiling, but it's not pushed in there that far. Uh, if you can get 350 off of the tee, then that's all you have into the green as well. And all of these players more than likely going to get more than 400 off of the tee. Right, yeah. Should be seeing some putters into that green on our seconds. Albert on the box. Just throwing a smooth hyzer. I guess yep. when you worry about distance, distance not a worry on the second shot. You don't have to worry about it on the first shot that much either. So. Yeah, you don't. If the only trouble I could really see is pushing for too much off of the tee and maybe going into that stuff on the right side. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm, I'm noticing for the first time there are some OB flags, flags over the there on the yeah. left, but. Yeah, the river's down there just to probably be like 20 feet left of that tree line. Yeah, I don't. I didn't even. I've played this course yesterday, and I didn't even notice that. So I don't think it should really come into play. Nobody at all. really goes over there. Yeah, so there's so much fairway to work with. It takes qu quite a shank to get OB on this one. Thomas Gilbert. Yeah, a little bit of wet mud and slippery out mm -hmm. here. Make sure you get your footing right. Is that going to turn? Oh, yes, it is. And this looks like that same disc he threw back on hole nine. Lots of turnover on it. That did make me think about that OB a little bit. It but did, it did yeah. drift over to the right. He'll have a, a hyzer angle into the green. So Albert's hyzer went 375 off the tee, 325 into the green. A little shy. Mm. It's okay. You'd like a shorter putt on this one, as as easy as it plays. Take some pressure off the putter game if you can. Yeah, 320 into the green is probably your average average on this hole of what you got. And Chris, leaving it a little bit short, mm -hmm. maybe just outside of the circle. Gilbert, next. Underthrown as well. 
Yeah, sometimes these late canopies, I think it does drop off some back it, behind. It you, does drop. I but gr- you've got a decent amount of room. I think there's 20, 30 feet behind the pin, yeah, before it gets real nasty. Ellis, that's also really under, really underthrown. These, these Man, were, his these mouth, were, his mouth making these guys scared. It's interesting, yeah. These are pretty bad, honestly. Let's see if Gilbert can totally redeem himself and make the putt. He cannot. Uh, gives it a good bid, though. Tough to miss high when you've got a low ceiling. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Ellis for the redemption putt as well. I think he probably did it on purpose. <laughs> Because he makes just about all of those anyway. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? He's padding those C2 stats. That's what Corey's doing right there. You sandbagger, Corey. <laughs> just no stress. You got to love it. Stand still, 56-footer. Nelson from just inside. Oh, and he pulls it off to the right side. He may have found a bit of that drop-off back there. I think I saw it hit a tree, so hopefully it stopped before that. And Albert, that's another missed opportunity. This is such yeah. This you're is, beating um, yourself up on you. Got to have better upshots than than this card did. Uh, Mikey Berenger had a much better upshot than the rest of this card as he threw it in for a two today. Yeah, <clears throat> that would be a good the, throw in there. Yeah, man. the yeah. only eagle of the round, of course, because it's seven hundred feet. That's a yeah. Uh, it's a real throw in. You know, it's it's a real eagle. You know, like a, a par five drop in eagle. You know. Yeah. A little cheaper, maybe. Uh, nice shot to you, Mikey. Well done, and well done by this guy, Corey Ellis. Way downtown. Sneaking it over the rim for the two. Gotta love it. Quick word from our sponsors back in just a few moments. Unbelievable stuff from Paul McBeth. Nathan, we are onto hole 14. I believe this is called the dream hole. Because it's just beautiful. I'll, I'll believe it as well. Um, <laughs> if you remember hole five's downhill tee pad, we were back up on top of that same hill, only about 30 feet away, uh, throwing downhill in a different direction, 442 feet. You've got the li- or the river over on the left side that does play OB, and the water is actually up higher than the OB line at certain points no, of it today really? because of all that rain. Corey Ellis. Is this a mid-range? Yeah, dude. 442 feet gonna go ahead and put it just outside the bullseye 15 feet left side fantastic shot wow albert going explorer fairway and this does favor the righty backhand Mm -hmm. absolutely oh this looks he's asking for it to get down yeah he's got lots of power he catches a wood chip skip and i guess stays in it stopped right there yeah interesting sweet Two Nelson. incredible drives so far. Nelson. This is drifting off to the right a little bit. It doesn't look like it's going to catch enough air to come back. Nice little cut roll, though. Most likely a soft bid from there. Yeah. Gilbert. When the card was up here throwing five, I turned around and watched Gavin Babcock just park it. The ace man. Yeah. This needs to sit down. This is okay. <gasps> Heading over towards that OB, but catches some branches. Yeah, that was nice. Oh, look how high the river is. Oh, my god. Yeah, look gosh. how fast it's moving and brown it is. Yeah. It's usually some clear water that you see here. <laughs> but that inch and a half of rain yesterday has made some changes around here. Yes, it has. Thomas might get a sneaky birdie. He has a look. And the man's an incredible putter. But just not enough shape on that one. 
some love taps for the tree. Yeah, tapping it, saying, thanks for keeping me in bounds. <laughs> is Nelson. <laughs> but you're in my way. You are also that. <laughs> Five straight pars for Nelson. Hopefully he can get it going here. Had a great front nine. Thomas saves par. Just because I didn't have many highlights yesterday, I was able to birdie this one Were with you the really? left hand backhand. No way, man. That same Callie McMoran metal flag roadrunner. Heiser flip it out so, to the right and just yeah, have it drift. I got about to where Corey's at, just a little bit shorter. Corey. About a 15-foot putt. Nice. Nice birdie there for Corey. Albert to match. Yeah, these are great shots. He must have hit that tree and bounced backwards. Yeah, right? Or maybe the the pole and we catch, missed it? I'm not sure. It definitely hit something, didn't it? Yeah, he he was right to tell it to sit because yeah. it hit something and moved a lot. <laughs> it was moving fast. When Albert throws it, they move fast. Oh, what a beautiful slow-mo shot from Peter right there. Yeah, disc just over the shoulder the entire time. <laughs> Super cool. Awesome shot. Hole 15, 390 feet. I suppose this is the ideal line now as the the left side it keeps getting smaller. It's just sh such a late window and very difficult to reach. Uh, but a low hyzer stand-up shot with something pretty neutral is going to be the ideal play. So that way when you get a skip, it's not that overbearing to the left. It kind of skips up straight. It's perfectly called, Nathan. I love that. Ellis on the tee. And see, Undertaker, right? It's exactly that disc you just called for. Yeah, and he... Oh, that was it. <laughs> yeah, he caught just a little bit high, pushed him left, and just barely caught that tree. That was about to be up there pretty close. Mm -hmm. About to get that straight skip. And Albert is going to go that left side, it looks like. You need to push this about 390 feet forward and then turn directly right in front of that pine that you see. If this has the right distance, this is the correct line. And it was just a bit short. It okay. didn't quite push it far enough. Yeah, it's a really touchy shot, like you said. Did you go for that lefty hyzer? I did. I landed right inside the gap, about 50 feet away. Okay, can't hate that. Yeah, I hated the putt, though. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson's drive. Got a little bit too much hyzer and catches some stuff that slows it down anyway. Looks like he's put about 68, 70 feet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thomas will show you the forehand line as well, looks like. And has a little more stand-up on it. This is a little low to get up to the pin, but gets around the corner. He's going to be inside circle, too. A chance. Let's see if Thomas can get on the board on the back nine. Corey pitching up for par. That's not great. But hopefully good enough. Yeah, we've all seen him putt. It's probably good enough. <laughs> Nelson, long birdie bid for Chris. Dude, he gives great bids Man. from distance, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got that hyzer angle angle dialed. It's mm -hmm. You don't see many players that have that much hyzer that are still online from that far away. But he's not offline very often. Mm -mm. That was a... Nice little pitch up there from Albert. Should salvage par. This is a birdie look for Gilbert. And there's that putt Sexton was talking about. Dead center dialed on it. What a great birdie. Strokes on most of the field. Only 14% able to card the birdie today. And here is Corey Ellis to save par. I wish you guys could see Nathan's face right now. Uh, so that fell out of the bottom of the basket. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Did he... So he... He he dropped his... He... Wait a minute. He dropped his disc in after that, right? Did yeah. he say anything before he did that? No, but... I think it's the right play. Well... Did did somebody tell him that it fell out the bottom? I think he knew because he watched it go in. Okay. But, yeah. I, I would have said provisional and dropped that in. Probably. Yeah. <clears throat> but I did. We've been talking to some people, and it's not going to be overruled, and that's 
that's going to count as a stroke, an extra stroke. So is it an extra stroke because the putt didn't count? Right. Or yeah, because... yeah. No, the putt didn't count. Yeah. And and that even if he had call provisional, he wouldn't have been awarded the the other the stroke. There's no way. Yeah. Isn't that crazy, man? There's no way. I, I, I'm. I've never seen that in my whole disc golf life. Have you ever seen that? Not like I, I've not seen like, it on like a drive? Like homemade baskets. Oh yeah, a homemade basket. Not I've like, seen them fall out. So man, I just I'm like mildly um, disgusted for Corey. I'll, I'll get a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, there's no, there's no reason that he. Yeah. So if, if you look, the, my, my boys looked at the basket, and actually it was damaged, probably by a tree or something, and it got rewelded, but slight, just slightly imperfectly. Where as Chris is showing you right now. It can fall through. Yeah, Corey should not get that stroke. I don't believe. I know, man. I don't like. It, it, think about the comp in ball golf. It's the ball falling through the earth. Like yeah. that, you know. It just shouldn't happen. You you should be able to trust something, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Heartbreaking stuff for Corey Ellis. He grabs a bogey. Yeah. Uh, PDGA rethink that rule. Yeah. For him getting a stroke falling through the bottom of the basket. We'll move on to hole 16, though. Par 3, 250 feet. Slight odd angle at the end. Uh, the righty backhand, you're going to want to throw it on a hyzer and just kind of have it slowly stand up while it drifts left. You could go forehand with a little flex. I think there might be some kind of high play up there also if you mm -hmm. just want to crash in as short as it is. Yeah, exactly. You get it pin high and then have it crash in. Gilbert... Yeah, that's just sometimes you don't get lucky on the, on the Heiser finish. Albert. This is too straight, maybe? Oh, never mind. Great kick. Yeah, nice kick. That big tree is up inside the circle, so as long as you don't kick backwards, it should work out well. Nelson. And has that hyzer flight on it. Doesn't quite get the stand up, but he's still inside the circle, maybe 25 feet. Mm -hmm. Ellis. And Perfect. as he deserves, get the stop to be as close <laughs> as he should to that basket. The man deserves every good of bid luck coming, <laughs> coming his way the rest of the tournament. Thomas Gilbert finds chains but does not find the bottom of the bucket. That will be a par for Thomas from Circle's Edge. Much closer is, in, is Nelson to get on the board on the back nine. So if you, re <coughs> if you excuse me, guys, if you remember earlier, I called the hole four 175 foot not the easiest hole on the course. Is it this? This one? 250 foot easier line is the easiest hole on the course. 69 percent of the field able to get a birdie. I believe that one. There are birdies from Tom and Nelson. Ellis following that up with a two of his own. Good it's in. That one. That one stayed in. It's got to rattle your your putting confidence, man. Like, what, what do I got to do? I just threw a perfect putt. And it fell out the bottom. There is Gilbert saving par, but that is that's losing a stroke to you. What do you say? Almost seventy percent of the field there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll call it a par two in the pro field. Got to get the two there. Mm -hmm. Nelson on the board on the back nine. Look at the pop on that yeah, putt, man! Just such a clean wrist snap. There. Yeah, definitely doesn't break out of it. Doesn't go too far. That's what helps him keep that online so much. Yeah, that was really cool to see. Great slow mo there from Peter. Yeah. 17. Well, I call it a tough get. What do you think, Nathan? Yeah, it's um, not not tough compared to some of the other par threes that are on the course. The ceiling right here where the drone is at seems to be a bit higher than I remember in the past. Um, yeah, the ceiling, they, they limped up the ceiling. It's one, of the, it's one of the ones you feel like you should get, although it's not the easiest to get. Albert, on the box, there is also a giant forehand hyzer line I've seen Ricky take in the past, but... Albert choosing not to go to it. He'll take the up the middle approach. Try to keep it clean. Yeah, and using that limbed up ceiling. Yeah, that gap didn't used to be there. No, definitely not. Uh, yeah. And that's what makes this one feel feel like you should get it today. Mm-hmm. 
Nelson looking for back to back birdies and a strong finish. That's not going to do it. Yeah, it came out a bit early. Luckily, still low enough to get underneath hmm. those branches, and he's up inside of circle two. I shouldn't count him out the way he's putting. <laughs> yeah, and he's still, although he's had that par streak, he's still got a clean round going. Mm -hmm. Ellis, will it flip? You know it will. Oh, my goodness. This is so this pretty. Ride straight. Corey Ellis. What a shot. Such Gilbert. Such control for how much power he has throwing under stable discs. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Again, an under stable disc. Such control with all the power that Thomas Gilbert has. Going to put it even closer than Corey. Wow. Which is going to fight him back to even for the round now. Uh -huh. He's trying to get back on track after a rough front. Love to see that. Chris trying to pop it in, but... Not. Didn't like it out of the hand. Yeah, it was just low the entire way there. Albert, a chance for birdie. Good hit. There it is. Saw him hit low. Saw him hit low a few times this round. And Corey Ellis... Going back to back after the basket Stay did him in wrong. There. <laughs> we got a Nelson Parr coming up. Seven down on the round. Solid, man. Has three bogeys, two to start. Wow. That was a, a ton of birdies at Milo. Thomas, the absolute dropper, fighting his way back to even on the day. Back to that seven down he earned yesterday. Look, wow. Deep knee bends from yeah, Albert. It cool works slow -mo though. There you can see the full top of the disc in his downswing for his putt. Very neat. You guys have very similar putts. That's why I think it's neat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are on to hole 18. Good luck getting a two on this one, man. Yeah, I imagine we're gonna see a bunch of threes here. You gotta push it. 460 feet straight before you can see the basket. Then somehow turn it 60 feet off to the right around this corner. Go it's backwards. A, yeah. So a bunch of straight plays here. It's too, I think the grass is too wet and long for a roller to really... I mean, it's possible to reach it, but it just makes it much more difficult. Yeah. I got one pin high in my random practice round, so... But way out to the left, you know. Yeah, it's, pin it, high still means like 70. Yeah, it does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't mean much. Albert going to the forehand. 72 huge forehand. miles an hour? Around the... No. That is a huge <sighs> forehand. That's 500 feet of forehand distance. That was nasty. No. Albert. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, Corey Ellis. Let's see what he can do. He's going buzz SS, Nathan. Yeah, and when you have the power that Corey has, you don't want to push long. He's just trying to get it around that corner, give himself that 70 to 90 foot range and does so, which is incredible with the Buzz SS. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Thomas, with the forehand play. You don't want to go in early on this one. It gets thick, and you might not be able to cut the corner, and I'm worried about that for Thomas right now. Yeah, that definitely did go in early. Going to be in a tough position. Is that one of the things you're thinking about on this one? Just like don't go in left early? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why, I mean, is you can't go in early, which makes it even more difficult to really attack this pin You, because then you mistake out to the left to make sure you have an angle to get mm -hmm. your par, which is what Chris has done here, you just throwing it out there to the make sure does, he has right? an angle. Yeah. So Thomas in the woods, I believe. And I don't know what he's got. No way. Oh, Almost gets out of almost. there. A chance to save par. Nelson, pin high, 133 left. Casual little forehand. Yep. And nicely done by Chris. What a great round. Yeah, bogey free, five down. I'm sure he wanted to get a few more birdies in there, but mm -hmm. to keep it clean, that's really what you need to do out here. Mm -hmm. Super impressive. Ellis from distance for two. 
But that seven down today will keep him on league card. He'll be in yeah. sec- second place going into tomorrow behind Double G. Gilbert from 54 to save par. Uh, oh, and not to happen. He f- tried to fight back with a couple birdies and get to even on the round. Going to end up finishing over par now, though, with that bogey on 18. What a birdie finish this would be for Albert. And Albert, one of only oh. 12% of the players to be able to put their disc inside of circle really? two. <laughs> only Alden Harris able to connect no from 49 feet for his birdie on uh-huh. hole 18. Thomas with the bogey finish. Well done by Alden. There's a, he got the win out in Goat Hill, I filmed this year. Yeah. That was impressive. He's not the farthest thrown guy, but he plays such smart, consistent golf. I mean, compared to the other people that showed up at Goat Hill, he throws very far. Yeah. You know. And also, Corey throws very far. Yes, he does. Um, he was able to get a win at the Bowling Green Open earlier this oh, year. nice. <clears throat> Albert, cleaning up par after that monster forehand. I guess uh, Thomas is headed over to Estonia this year. He was... Asking uh, Albert for some, for some travel tip pointers. Oh, yeah. It'd be neat to get out and travel internationally. I know they um, are very proud of their disc golf scene. Yeah, it's incredible. As well. What a day on Milo West. That was fun. Yeah, lots of lots of interesting scores out here. Garrett Gerthy shooting the hot round 11 under par. Linus Carlson. Trying to follow along with that nine under. Corey Ellis and Adam Hammis going to fill out our top card for the final round. Yeah, it's going to be a very fun watch. We'll catch you guys there. Thanks for watching round two. Catch you for the finish.